Yeah. Uh, except the only problem is me and him know nothing about Mega Man. <laughs> Not that we made on him. It. It's just that we haven't played any of the games that way. I think if we could, we would have because when I heard Mega Man's a good game. Mm -hmm. But just we never played it. And we never had the opportunity to, except like Mega Man from Super Smash Brothers. But that's the extent of our play. Or the new Mega Man because we could easily get it on Switch. But I don't know. Oh, I guess that too, huh? But I probably won't get that. Yeah, well, I'm not getting it. Not. Isn't that like a remaster of the original, or is it a new game altogether? I think. I think it's our rematch of the original. I don't know for sure. I just don't know because I've never fucking played Mega Man in my lifetime. Yeah, Except for maybe it. once and I barely remember it. Yeah, it only feel like a I remember bit. I had one game for the GameCube back when I was a kid, but I can't remember what it was called. Mm hmm. That being said, start it? though, I th I'm excited only just because of the fact that this is the first time that Death Bell has ever done a Battle Royale type of thing. Mm hmm. So this will definitely be interesting because this is gonna be one. This will be the first fight where I do believe there's five of them fighting at once, and only one victor has to remain. Mm-hmm. So, they should redo this, but not um normally they should redo it. They should do it with Spider Man. Spider Man Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. That would be way too many though, because there's way too many different like timelines and media. That'd be way too long. Uh, no, I'm talking about out of the move movie, just strictly the movie ones. So, Tom Holland, Spider-Man versus Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man versus to Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man. And technically, you can count Miles Morales, because that is a movie Spider-Man. Well, I guess so, but I kind of feel like he's set in his own universe, though. Or multiverse. I guess I should say. True. Yeah. But, you ready to start this? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Three, two, one. Today, we've got access to all sorts of personalized data, and 23andMe can help you learn about yourself at the most trustworthy source around, your own DNA. With more than 125 genetic reports, 23andMe can give you insight about your health, physical traits, and more. Feel like you can never quite get enough sleep? You might not be imagining things. It could be your genes. Buy your own health and ancestry service kit today at 23andMe.com slash death battle. That's the number 23andMe.com slash death battle. Mega Man may be an icon by himself, but others have carried on his legacy, creating real immortality. Immortality? Not on this show! Time to find out which Mega Man is the most Mega of the men! While there are many versions of the character to choose from, mega, mega. not that one, this battle will feature the five most prominent. The classic era Mega Man. Mega Man X. Volnut from the Legend series. Battle Network's Mega Man.exe. And the alien Star Force Mega Man. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the year 20XX, the brilliant Dr. Light would change fast. history forever, developing mm -hmm. machines with AI so Which advanced it mimicked now. actual life. His goal was a world where robots and humankind could live together in trust and harmony. I <laughs> want all you watching to remember that, because oh, right off the bat, Light's partner Dr. Wiley reprogrammed oh, the robots, robots and tried to take over the world, joke, right? just the first in a lifetime of dick moves. To combat this threat, Light upgraded one of his prototypes, Rock, into the original, the classic, Mega Man. Classic, huh? What's next? Diet Mega Man? Cherry Vanilla Mega Man? Mega Man Zero? To one of those, technically yes, but that's much <laughs> later. Mega Man is armored with ultra-strong Serotanium and comes equipped with the Mega Buster, a literal hand cannon for each arm. While its normal lemon energy bloops aren't too deadly, he can charge them up to tear through Robot Master ass like nothing. <laughs> Ah, uh, meant to do that, that there. That they Fly! Added, like, you know, Got him! Mega Man's most notable tool is his <laughs> variable yeah, weapon system, which allows and, him to uh, copy the data of fallen fly. enemies to gain and, their weapons uh, as his own. Uh, so now he can cut you down with the metal blade, light you up with the napalm mm -hmm. bomb, and burn you alive with atomic fire, which is twice as hot as the surface of the sun. He's basically got a tool for every occasion. Sure, he can shield himself with the skull barrier, 
Reflect projectiles with the Mirror Buster. Bypass wow. armor with the Centaur Flash. Stop time with the Time Stopper. Oh. And create localized singularities with the Black Hole wait, Bomb. See, wait, what? Gaze, this little blue buddy wait, needs a ball. boost. He can activate his Damn. double gear system, which what? is basically Roboroids. They jack up his power, his speed, or both at the same time. And with his robotic canine companion, Rush, Mega Man can access his super adapter form, that which logo. grants him flight, a boost in power, logo. and rocket-propelled punches. We'll Mega see. Man is strong enough to lift a 60,000-ton tower. He's tough enough to survive the gravity of Jupiter, the heat what? of the sun, and absolute zero. Plus, he's fast enough to keep up with Quick Man, who can dodge lightning and can get close yeah. to the speed of light. Mega Man has battled over 100 Robot Masters and other robotic foes, including Sunstar, who was powerful enough to self-destruct and destroy the Wily Star, basically a small Death Star. With its size in mind, oh, wow. this would need energy equivalent to over 7 trillion megatons of TNT. Too bad all that power runs on limited ammo, though. Mega Man would carry the banner of peace across the world, fighting Wily's tyranny and spreading Dr. Light's dream of human-robot coexistence. And everyone lived happily ever after. Uh, Until they didn't. He's the greatest creation of my career. No, this and is I Mega will Man. call him Mega Man. Mega Man. I like it. Not bad. Let's see Flash what forward 100 years when the archaeologist Dr. Four. Kane happened upon a sleeping blue android hidden deep within a ruined laboratory. Unlike the previous model, this android possessed free will indistinguishable from a human's. This wasn't Mega Man. This was Mega Man X. This guy was built by the late Dr. Light to be better than the original Mega Man model in every way. Aware of the danger that such a powerful android could be, Light locked him away in a capsule that ran tests on his morality for 30 years. And what better way to match decades of good boy training than waking up to worldwide war? Dr. Kane began mass replication of X, but his process oh, was imperfect. Many of these reploid robots went maverick and embroiled the world in centuries-long oh, warfare. Damn. Despite being a pacifist, X felt obliged to step in and help. His go-to is his X-Buster, which can fire off single shots of condensed solar energy or charge up several times over yeah. for even more power. He also carries his partner Zero Z-Saber, a beam sword that can reflect projectiles and cut through nearly everything. But he wouldn't be a true Mega Man without the ability to scan and copy other robots' weaponry. He has copied countless elemental weapons that control fire, lightning, wind, water, and ice, as well as bombs, missiles, mines, drones, lasers, and force fields. He can shoot out black holes, turn invincible for a short time, and create a clone of himself. Which I really wish I could do. He can stop time and even resist similar effects when other robots try their own time stoppers. But when he gets serious, he breaks out his ultimate armor. It doubles his durability, gives him unlimited huh? ammo, allows him to fly what? and attack with the Nova Strike move, and teaches him some super-powered moves like the Hadouken and Jaruken. Yeah, turns out Dr. Light was a fan of Street Fighter. But possibly his greatest <laughs> ability cool. is what the X in cool. his name refers to. The yeah. X Factor that is his limitless evolutionary potential. Which is your typical anime bullshit. Powered by love or friendship or puppies or whatever, X has completely regenerated from near death and even reformed his whole body in only a few seconds from just his metal core. With all his immense power, X has yeah. defeated dozens of Mavericks, including the General. The General once tanked a planet-destroying laser, the energy of which would require 57 quadrillion megatons of TNT. He can move fast enough star, to dodge so Optic Sunflower's light-speed lasers and survive channeling enough energy through his body to annihilate all of Japan. After years of fighting, he managed to destroy his arch enemy, the Sigma Virus, with his most powerful weapon yet, the Mother Elf, aka the latest thing to join our Hall of Fame of terrible, terrible names for awesome stuff. The Mother Elf is like a living antivirus software that can heal X's wounds, increase his power, and completely rewrite a Reploid's code, giving him complete control over cybernetic beings. That's how he defeated the Sigma virus, by erasing it from every Reploid in the world all at once. And the day was finally saved. Mm -hmm. Meaning well, until the Mother Elf was corrupted and the biggest war ever broke out all over again, but for the ultimate peacekeeper, X sure spent a lot of time out. kicking ass. As long as there's hope, we can change the future. 
Thousands of years later, the world was consumed by a great flood. What? Humanity was all but extinct. The world got so what? shitty, the man in the sky himself had to step in and flush that thing. All that remained on the planet was a race of artificial life forms known as carbons. But some of humanity survived what? in the orbital space station, the Elysium. This station housed the Master System, a computer program designed to control the carbon's population on Earth. But over time, all the humans on board died. Except for one, the Master and his assistant, a carbon known as Mega Man Trigger. Since the carbons were basically the only humanoid life forms left in this super sad world, this last human figured they deserved free reign of the planet. So he told Trigger to destroy the Master System. Though I'm pretty sure Nintendo already did that. Despite being a purifier unit designed to protect the Master System, Trigger obeyed. But thanks to this chick Sarah, he got his robo butt whooped hard, lost all his memories, and got turned into a baby. Sealed away for years, he was eventually discovered by carbon diggers who named him Volnut. And thus began his journey to stop the Master System, battle pirates, and trigger his lost memories. See what I did there? Wiz, gotta talk about something you said there. Why did they name him Volnut? What a dumb name! The only thing dumber than that name was that stupid pun that you made. Well, to save the day, Volnut has, surprise, surprise, the Mega Buster! And he can switch out his right arm for a bunch of special weapons like a machine gun, a spread gun, homing missiles, grenades, mines, a sword, a reflector shield, and his most powerful weapon of all, the Shining Laser! It's a laser that shines. Like, a lot. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, he wears uh, armor which lets him hover for extra speed, can, like, and also shields that can make him briefly invulnerable and invincible. That's it? No stopping time or farting black holes out of his butt? I guess it's not that bad. Well, most of these weapons pull from the same energy source rather than separate pools, what? and they each need to be swapped out manually. Yep, <sighs> starting to think we found Diet Mega Man. So basically Don't guy... underestimate him. Volnut is a charming hero with a lot of power. Mm -hmm. He can lift 9.5 ton stone blocks, move fast enough to evade meteors, which re-enter Earth's atmosphere at Mach 33, and what even tank them head on. Steve That's a kinetic energy Mega equivalent Mega to 38 Mega tons of TNT. He's defeated scores of giant mechs and even Sarah in a rematch for the ages. All in a day's mm -hmm. work for Mega Man Volnut. That's it? <laughs> Don't worry, Yuna. I think this guy's Why? probably gonna die. I know wrong. She'll come looking for us, no matter what happens. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't try and pull that happily ever after crap! Humanity went extinct, the planet is flooded, and the last Mega Man is stuck in space forever because Legends 3 is never gonna happen. <laughs> that peaceful future Dr. Light fought so hard for turned oh, yeah, out to be total bullshit, mind. and if you think about it, it's all his fault! Love and peace are lies, God is dead, and we're all totally f Maybe in this timeline, but luckily, oh, there is another. Oh, now we're gonna do Let's go all the way back to the year 20XX. Imagine, instead of revolutionizing science with robotics, Thomas Light focused on computer sciences and created a world dominated by the internet and digital AI. Oh, and his name was also Tadashi Hikaru. Oh, great, the AI overlord timeline. Hey, Siri, please don't kill everyone and take over the world. I didn't catch that boomstick. Oh god, it's already happening! Ahem. The internet infrastructure Hikari worked on was so complex, it became its own separate universe known as the Cyber World. This unpredictable digital universe was managed by sentient computer programs called NetNavies. Reminds me of those uh, digital Pokemon. Or those called again? Hikari Digimon. had a grandson named Lan. Yes, that's really his name. And Lan had one of the best net navvies around, Megaman.exe. Together, they became the most successful virus busting duo in both the real and cyber worlds, real? and saved both what? countless what? times. Yeah, EXE can, can shoot can foes down with his regular or charge shots with his, oh, no. yes, you guessed it, Mega Buster. Yeah. He can fly with his Mega Booster and cook the shit out of a Thanksgiving buses? Day turkey yeah. with his Mega Baster. Uh, okay, maybe he doesn't have that left. 
His true strength, however, lies in Lan's enormous collection of battle chips, which contain a variety of different weapons and tools for EXE to use. He has over 1,500 of these. What? You know the drill by now. He's got cannons, shotguns, spread guns, mini bombs, big bombs, time bombs, shockwaves, earthquakes, meteor swords, kunai boomerangs, and an incredibly deadly yo-yo. That doesn't even scratch the surface. He can create black holes, move objects with telekinesis, turn intangible and invisible, dispel force fields, resist having his data assimilated, uninstall customized programs and weapons data in enemies, and use Giga Freeze to put programs and even the whole internet in stasis. Whoa. That why my internet went down last night? I might have to break out boomstick.exe and kick his ass. How do I Alt F4 this little bastard? Good luck getting past EXE's defenses. His dark aura is a barrier so tough it could survive the end of the entire cyber world. And since EXE is a digital program, not an organic being, he survived being impaled, losing limbs, and even being blown to bits before pulling himself back together. Wait a minute, if he's just a program like you said, can he even fight in the real world like other super fighting robots? He's done so before. He can enter the real world through special dimensional areas, or through sheer power output alone. What? He can even merge body and mind with land using I've full synchronization, a technique only possible if both beings have a strong mental bond. Fusion ha! Well, it turns out EXE and Lan are super close because, plot twist, EXE is Lan's stillborn dead baby brother turned into a computer program. Wow. Yeah, well, wow. when they bond perfectly, they enter hub form, a state powerful enough to defeat Nebula Grey and the Dark Galaxy universe with just a wave of his hand. EXE oh, wow. is tough enough to survive hey. a planet-sized Psybeast exploding. Wow. That's a blast worth over 14 septillion megatons of TNT. He's quick enough to search practically the entire cyber world in less than a minute, and powerful enough to absorb and recreate the same cyber world Man, in a single move. Death, and know. after all of that, what? Lan what? retired from virus now busting seeing, to becoming what? scientist, pause. whose research... Yeah, let's pause. Now seeing this, and now that I know sort of what Mega Man is capable of, I have an idea for a death battle. Yeah, what's that? <clears throat> Mega Man versus Android 17. They're technically both androids. Well, which Mega Man are we talking about? Because the original Mega Man versus Android Seventeen. Mm, I feel like Mega Man X would probably be more uh, fair. I think. True. But just, just imagine because that. Because Mega Man X is supposed to surpass Mega Man in every way, so. Yeah, but think about it. They're both technically androids. They're both made by scientists, and. Uh, the only problem is one scientist wanted to rule the world; the other wanted to save it. Yeah, but you see, they're sort of similar. Yeah, that's true. But I guess I could kind of see that. Mega Man X is definitely very durable, from what I've heard. He's a lot more durable than Mega Man, the classic. And obviously, yeah, more Mega Man Ultimate. X versus Android 17. What? That'd be an interesting death battle. I have not seen what EXC, well, I mean, the rest of what EXC can do. Same with Star Force. So we should probably see what they got. So, three, two, one, and let's go would play a part in the next generation of Mega Man. Pretty impressive for a guy who spends all his time jacking off. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Wiz, you, we had to work that in. I understand. <laughs> 200 years later, the world had yet again progressed, this time with the advent and proliferation of electromagnetic, or EM, wave technology, which is a fancy way of saying they switched their main resource from internet cyberspace to basic radio waves. Well, at least radio waves will never try to take over the world and commit genocide. Oh, you say that now. This is Geo Stellar, the son of astronaut Kelvin Stellar. Oh, okay, first land, now Kelvin, these names are killing me, but anyway, Kelvin got lost in space after being attacked and captured by a race of aliens made of electromagnetic waves known as FMians. Like FM radio aliens. FMians. What? Uh, luckily for Kelvin, he made friends with an EM alien kitty thing named Omega Zis who tried to help him escape by zapping him into radio waves. It wasn't the best idea ever. But eventually Omega and Geo met up and merged together to become Star Force Mega Man. And with this transformation, Geo acquired and amplified all of Omega's EM powers. Namely, as a being composed of EM waves, he's effectively invisible and intangible. We passed right through. We're EM waves, remember? 
though the latter usually requires conscious thought to activate. He can also fly, teleport, survive in space, turn living beings into EM waves, and manipulate data itself to control other machines from the inside out. Remember when Mega Man used to just be a cute little robot? Now he's a radio alien cat fusion thing. Well, at least he still has the Mega Buster, which does exactly what it did the last four times. Moving on. Actually, this Mega Buster is a bit <laughs> different. Like, just like, not only okay, does it charge on automatically when not in use, it can be modified with different wizard equips, no relation, to change its power, speed, and status effects. Ah, it would have been a lot better if it had boomstick equips. Well, I'm sure there's something boomstick related in Geo's nearly 600 battle cards, which provides Star Force Mega Man with numerous special weapons. He's got guns, swords, hammers, axes, scythes, bombs, missiles, lasers, meteors, shockwaves, a crap ton of elemental attacks, and when all else fails, he can just use his bare hands. He can paralyze foes, drain their health, summon black holes, turn invincible, heal wounds, create force fields, summon other EM beings for special attacks, and control noise. Control noise? So like, when my neighbor plays music really loud, he can just turn it off with his mind? No, but... I thought you lived in a trailer in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, man. Animals are getting smarter. <laughs> wow. Right. Ow, Noise is excess is energy wow, created by EM beings, wow, kind of like that. static. When utilized properly, it can cause machinery malfunctions similar to an EMP, drive EM beings insane, and, if he absorbs enough of it, allow Geo and Omega to change into even more powerful forms. His greatest form is Red Joker, which can fire the Red Gaia Erasure, a huge laser that'll reduce your body to EM particles and shoot them across the atmosphere. While you're still conscious. Talk about one hell of a way to go. With all Damn. these powers and more, Geo and Omega have the resume to match. They've defeated dozens of enemies, including Sirius. Ha! We got her! Ahem, who was powerful enough to move a black hole hundreds of millions of miles in a single day. The black hole in question was Sagittarius A, which has a mass four million times greater than the sun. Factoring in its mass and the speed what? it traveled, we can get a kinetic energy of 4.6 decillion megatons of TNT enough to obliterate a solar system. Then Star Force survived inside of that black hole like it was nothing. And since he's made of radio waves, he's as fast as light. Though some other EM beings were able to fly from the center of the Milky Way galaxy to Earth in only three days. That's over three million times the speed of light. Star Force even fought EXE once. He technically lost, but he was just holding back to make sure he didn't Marty McFly the future away. But of all his accomplishments, his greatest feat was one that no other Mega Man up until that point had achieved. This world and this timeline actually turned out pretty great. All thanks to Star Force Mega Man. All right, the Um, I don't know who to what? go with. There's a lot of okay. Well, um, to be completely Let's pause. what? Let's pause it so we can talk about it. No, I paused it already. Okay. Ah, okay. uh, fuck. Where to start with this? Um. Okay. It's going to boil down to probably Mega Man X, Mega Man .exe, and Star Force. Only because the original classic Mega Man doesn't have the feats that can stand up to Mega Man X, EXE, and Star Force. Mm -hmm. So Mega Man... I know Mega Man has a variety of weapons, but he has limited ammunition. So I don't think it'll last too long. And Volnut, um, he's not even the equation in this at all. I kind of expect him to be the first to die, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That being said, this will boil down to Mega Man X, uh, EXE, and Star Force, I think. Yep. Hmm. Here's my thing. Uh, they said that EXE was able to survive the entirety of the cyber world being destroyed, and he was able to destroy it himself. And he was fast mm -hmm. enough to search the entirety of the cyber world. Now, here's my thing. Is the cyber world just a small place, or is it an actual universe? Mm-hmm. That's kind of my thing, because if he's able to search the entirety of a cyber world universe that's technically a universe in less than a minute, he would be moving way more faster than what Star Force was. Okay. At least that's what I'm thinking, because, I, because that's only a theory, because they didn't say that the cyber world is like a universe, you know what I mean? Yep. So, for all I know, it could be a small place, and his feats could not build a matchup to Star Force. 
But at the same time, though, if my theory is correct, then his power output and speed output would heavily, heavily overmatch fucking Star Force by a lot. Probably. Because if he's able to destroy an entire universe, that is way more bigger than a black hole feat, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um... Oh, I still don't know who to go with, though. Uh, what are your thoughts? I have no idea. All I know is Mega Man, the original, is going to lose probably either first or second. Uh, who do you think it will boil down to for the last two? Because we both know that the three that will remain uh, towards the end, I feel like, will probably be X. EXE and, and the final X. Mega Man, I think, are going to be the ones that are going to be at the final battle. Yeah, you think so? The X yep. and Star Force? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay, that being said, who do you think it would be, Star Force or EXE? I have no idea. Hmm. Well, my universe is only a theory, like the theory that Dark World is a universe. I think just go that. for EXE, then. But at the same time, though... Does, well, I mean, they also said that EXE has, like, 1,500 battle chips, right? Mm-hmm. Don't those battle chips contain stuff that could stop programs? And from and if I can remember correctly, Star Force is an EM radio wave robot, meaning that I feel like those would affect them. Especially Maybe. since Star Force fought EXE in one of the games in canon, and I'm pretty sure in that game they had the same battle chips, if I'm not mistaken. But he was holding back, they said, because uh, he didn't want to... Marty McFly, the future. Yeah, but what if yep. EXE was also holding back? We never know. I'm going to go with EXE. I kind of feel like EXE uh, might have a good shot. I feel like. I mean, he was able to wave his hand and one of the fucking villains was gone. Mm-hmm. That being said, I don't know the full power of that, but I'm going to have high hopes for EXE. Uh, what are your thoughts? Who do you think is going to win? The final Mega Man? Star Force? Mm-hmm. Okay, go to 2040. Hold on. Are you there? Um, I'm there. Okay, give me a second. Okay. I think this battle is definitely going to be intense, though, I feel like. Mm -hmm. It's a battle royale, like, and four of the yep. Mega Mans can shoot fucking black holes. So, mm -hmm. let's see what we got. I'm definitely ready? excited. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, there's Walnut. Oh, Magma. That was in the virtual world, though. Oh, yeah. We're not in the virtual world. Fuck. Forgot about that. This <laughs> last just did absolutely nothing to have. That's what hurt you. Ball Knight, you shouldn't even be here right now, man. You are fucked. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, shit. 
Or Star Force had this one in the bag. Yeah. Surprisingly, this battle's victor was fairly clear cut. Not really. While the original three Mega Men had many impressive feats, they were all outclassed by EXE and Star Force's cosmic level feats. Yep. Mm -hmm. And poor Volnut couldn't keep up with any of them. Even Classic had a leg up with his huge variety of weapons, but his limited ammunition meant he would never last too long. Yeah, Plus, well. X was designed to surpass him in every way. X's mother elf may have rewritten the code of the Reploids in his time, but both EXE and Star Force were much more powerful data beings who have resisted similar rewriting before. In particular, Star Force's noise manipulation gave him a huge advantage over the Mother Elf, which we know to be fairly vulnerable to corruption. But I know what you're thinking. You Star oh. Force is 200 years ahead of EXE. Shouldn't his tech be way better? Wait, he even held years? back in their cannon fight. That's to clarify a cannon in the story, not they were both using oh, their okay. cannons. True, but so did EXE. Neither were Knew fighting it. at their full potential, as made evident by their other feats. At best, Star Force may oh, move 3 million- Hold up, pause. Look at the top right. Uh, the, this, that fight proved the XC can harm Star Force despite his You're damn correct. biology. You were correct. correct. Also, Star Force entered that fight after his final game while EXE was still early in his own canon timeline. So he was at the end of his, like, career while EXE was still at the beginning of his timeline. And he was still able to hurt him. Mm -hmm. So that definitely proves a lot. Wow, I didn't actually expect my theory to be right. I was honestly just guessing, pulling that out of my ass. Let's see what else they have to say. But I definitely will say that that's interesting to point out at the top right there. Uh, okay. Three, two, one, continue. A million times the speed of light, but EXE was fast enough to search the whole Cyberworld universe in a brief period of time, and powerful enough to later destroy it in its entire oh, yeah, it And the Cyberworld isn't just a hard drive with some gigabytes, it's a universe with stars and galaxies and the whole shebang! Right. To clock EXE's speed, we yeah. first need to find the volume of EXE's field of view Wait, compared to the volume of the observable gonna... universe. Like, With that, we can determine the number of passes EXE made across its diameter in order to search everywhere. While the manga doesn't give an exact time frame, the situation EXE is in is dire. His ally, Base.exe, is on death's door. So Mega Man's solution is to zoom around the universe as fast as possible until he happens upon some tool or weapon that can help. That doesn't sound like it should work. But it does! And he couldn't have been gone for more than a minute or base would have been done for! So with that in mind, EXE must have been traveling over three Novem Decillion times the speed what? of light. No, That's fuck. 60 zeros long. Wiz, I'm pretty sure we just set a new record for highest number ever on this show. You know, 
I think so. What? And it also goes 60. without saying that while Star Force's solar system mm -hmm. level black hole feat was impressive, EXE destroying an entire universe is far yeah, superior. Very, About very 200 fun. quintillion times more, if you're curious. Don't forget that EXE's arsenal of battle yep. chips is much larger than Geo's collection of battle cards. Also, EXE could have just used chips like Uninstall, Interrupt, and Catcher to disable all the other Mega Man's weapons and programs whenever he wanted. Well, except for Volnut, ironically, because his weapons were manual rather than programmed. <laughs> you got one, buddy. All the Mega Men are good at what they do, but at the end of the day, EXE had the speed, power, and the tools needed to be the best super fighting robot. This battle totally rocked. Man. The winner is Mega Man.exe. Okay. Hey. Pause. We don't need to mm -hmm. find out who's next because this is the past death battle, so that battle's already out. Uh that was a very interesting fight. It was intense. Very intense. Mm -hmm. And I will say that I feel like death battles should have probably, I don't know, explained a little bit more about um EXE. At least a little bit more, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Just because of the fact that they mentioned about, like, the cyber world, but they never mentioned that it was a universe. Meaning that people will probably miscontempt that being that the cyber world, who's never played Mega Man, would probably say that the cyber world is just a freaking uh, small place. I thought it was. I mean, at first, but then he said, but then they said that he was able to destroy it in its entirety instead of just destroying the cyber world. Meaning Wait, that... Okay, now here's a real question. Who do you think is going to be in Season 9 of Death Battle? Well, the first battle of the season nine is going to be Peace, Peacemaker versus uh, uh, Punisher, so which might be live action, which I'm hoping for to be honest. Because who else do you think? Well, is gonna be... it's already been confirmed off of this teaser that they showed us that Boba's going to be in, or the Mandalorian, one or the other. Uh, Wanda from Marvel and Tanjiro from Demon Slayer are going to for sure be in it. But uh, there's another person who's also confirmed. Who? I'm looking at it now. Vegeta's gonna be in a death battle. What? Uh, against two, though, is the question. I don't know! A lot of people honestly say Thor, but I don't know. Mm. But, seeing Vegeta in the death battle, they do actually have to add in the comic version, the manga version, meaning he'll have access to his destruction power. He'll literally be unstoppable. Depends on who he's going against. Because they cannot do this, they cannot, you know, like, not add in the manga. Because if they don't add in the manga, then I'm going to be calling bullshit. Because, uh... Because the actual, because it's canon that Vegeta has access to Hakai energy, right? Mm-hmm. In the manga, he, uh, he has his new form, which is Ultra Ego. So, he should have access to it in the next Death Battle. If he doesn't, I'm going to be calling out Death Battle, for, for real. For real. All they need to do is announce a Goku versus Superman 3, and that would... Yeah, because a lot of you people still honestly think that Goku would lose. But guess what? You have no idea what Goku is capable of this new, in the new manga. And plus, Beerus still surpasses him, I feel like. No, Beerus still surpasses Goku. Goku's not anywhere near Beerus. He's close to Beerus' level, but he's not near Beerus' level yet. Even with MUI, he's still not as strong as Beerus. But I think he's definitely going to be more stronger than Beerus. I mean, look at Whis. Mm -hmm. Whis is by far more stronger than Beerus when Whis is able to knock him out with one tap. Of his yes. Head. That kind of says that kind of says volumes about how strong Whis is with Ultra Instinct. Mm hmm. Because I'm I'm excited for that new Dragon Ball movie. Okay, but enough of that though. How would you think of this death battle overall? I thought it was good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Who'd you think was going to win towards the end there? Did you think it was going to be EXE or Star Force? I still thought Star Force was going to win, but I guess not. I mean, I kind of... I mean, at one point, I did honestly thought that Star Force was going to win, but once after EXE pulled out that one thing, his uh, ultimate mode or whatever, I was like, oh, I think he's got this. Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't expecting X to be corrupted, but I guess since X is a robot and Star Force is, uh, well, Star Force is a freaking EM radio waves, I feel like that would make sense for corruption. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, the battle was definitely good. I like the music. I like the battle itself. Um, I like the outcome. The only problem is, is that. 
they definitely hit EXE's far greater talents. Because this was a cakewalk for EXE. Let's just point that out there. He's able to move, like, who knows how fast, like, flash level fasts across the universe within seconds. Mm -hmm. And he's able to destroy it and survive it being destroyed. So. Exactly. I think EXE should be coming back into a death battle versus someone of universal level destruction. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, I would honestly like to see that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, that being said, though, I hope you guys enjoyed this death battle in the past. Uh, we will be reacting to more until Season 9 comes out. I don't know which ones. We will have to look through them and discuss them and see which ones we haven't watched yet. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe today to see more. And as always, we will see you guys back for another tale. See ya. Yep.